Hello. I have another book for you called Owl Moon. This is another favorite from our family. And your aunt that's visiting you right now read this book when she was young and really loved it. It is about a father and his daughter. This is Pa, as she calls him, and the little girl who tells the story. And you can see they're out at night in the snow and it's a big full moon. It's written by Jane Yolen and she's written many really good children's books. She's a good writer. And you probably will read more of her books in the future. Okay, well, they live out in a farm out in the country. And so I'm going to show you the picture first. You can kind of get an idea. It's a big, wide open area. Often farms are very far apart from each other. They're not like a house right next to the next one where you, peop where you live and where I live. But there's a farm and a house and buildings for the animals, etc. And here's the father and the little girl heading out of the house at night. So let's see what's going to happen. It was late one winter night, long past my bedtime, when Pa and I went owling. That means we went out to look for an owl. Mm -hmm. There was no wind. The trees stood still as giant statues. And the moon was so bright, the sky seemed to shine. Somewhere behind us, a train whistle blew. Ooh, long and low like a sad, sad song. I could hear it through the woolen cap that she had, Pa had pulled down over her ears. A farm dog answered the train, and then a second dog. A second dog joined in. They sang out, trains and dogs, for a real long time. And when their voices faded away, it was as quiet as a dream. We walked on toward the woods, Pa and I. Again, you can see it has wide open spaces. Here's there by some trees. It's a fox. Mm -hmm. And there's Pa and the little girl, and they're walking out a ways from their house toward the woods. Our feet crunched over the crisp snow, and little gray footprints followed us. Pa made a long shadow, but mine was short and round. I had to run after him every now and then just to keep up, and my short round shadow bumped after me. But I never called out because when you go owling, you have to be quiet. That's what Pa always says. And I had been waiting to go owling with Pa for a long, long time. So you can see their shadows. Pa is taller longer legs, so his shadow is kind of long and hers is more rounded and short. And they're walking out and being very quiet. This is all their footprints behind them. I believe that Pa was waiting until she was old enough to be able to do this with him. We reached the line of pine trees, black and pointy against the sky, and Pa held up his hand. I stopped right where I was and waited. He looked up as if he was searching the stars, as if he was reading a map up there. The moon made his face into a silver mask with a glow. And then he called out. <coughs> That's the sound of a great horned owl. <coughs> Here's Pa making the sound in his hands, and she's watching. She's all bundled up there. It's cold out. Again he called out, and then again, and after each call, he was silent. And for a moment, we both listened. But there was no answer. Pa shrugged. I shrugged. I was not disappointed. My brothers had all told me, because they were older, that sometimes there's an owl, and sometimes there isn't. Just take your chance and hope that you might get to see an owl. So here's all the white wilderness of snow and them standing under the shadows of the trees. Looks like a little raccoon has a home in that tree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we walked on. I could feel the cold as if someone's icy hand was palmed down on my back. And my, and my nose and the tops of my cheeks felt cold and hot at the same time. 
but I never said a word. If you go owling, you have to be quiet and make your own heat. Okay. So here's her dad walking farther into the to the trees, closer to the woods, and her following behind. Okay. You know, owls, there's different kinds of owls. And each kind of owl has its own sound, its own hoot. <laughs> and barn owl, or excuse me, barn owls are one kind, snowy owls. And this is the great horned owl. It does not have horns. It has little tufts on top of its head that give it its, its name because they look a little bit like furry horns or feathery horns. Well, we went into the woods. The shadows were the blackest things I had ever seen. They stained the white snow. My mouth felt furry for the scarf over it was wet and warm. Ever have that when you have a scarf on your mouth over your mouth? I didn't ask what kinds of things hide behind black trees in the middle of the night. When you go owling, you have to be brave. And stay with your parent, <laughs> like she is. She's staying real close to her dad. They're walking and walking by the trees in the woods, see? And the bright uh, full moon is certainly helping, isn't it? Then we came to a clearing in the dark woods. The moon was high above us. It seemed to fit exactly over the center of the clearing, and the snow below it was whiter than the milk in a cereal bowl. So there seemed that the sun, or the sun, the moon was shining so brightly because it was a full moon, that it lit up this whole open area, a clearing in the woods. And it's so white and shiny, so pretty, it really is. I sighed and piled up his hand again at the sound. I put my mittens uh, over the scarf and over my mouth and listened hard. So she's kind of trying to keep warm. Yeah. And then Pa called, Woo! I listened and I looked so hard. I looked so hard that my ears hurt and my eyes got cloudy with the cold. But Pa raised his face to call out again and before he could open his mouth, an echo came threading through the trees. You know what an echo is? It's like the repeat of the sound of, of a, a sound. And in this case, it was the repeat of the sound that her pa had just made, an owl hoot. And the sound that came through the trees was, ooh, 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 ooh. It wasn't another person, was it? Pa almost smiled. And then he called back. Ooh, 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 ooh. Just as if he and the owl were talking, like talking about supper, or about the woods, or the moon, or, or the cold, like they were having a, a conversation. I took my mitten off the scarf off my mouth, and I almost smiled too. <laughs> Here they are looking up, trying to see where is that owl that just answered. Pa and the little girl. You know it's got to be around here somewhere. Where is it? The owl's call came closer. From high up in the trees, on the edge of the meadow, nothing in the meadow, that's like that open area, nothing moved. And all of a sudden, an owl shadow, part of the big tree shadow, lifted off and flew right over us. We watched silently, with heat in our mouths, the heat of all those words we had not spoken. The shadow hooted again. Let's see if we can see it again. You can kind of, can't see anything real specific, but you know it's there and you they saw the shadow. And there they are. Can you see them over there watching, watching, watching? They know it's close. I'm not sure where. <gasps> Pop turned on his big flashlight and caught the owl just as it, as it was landing on a branch. Okay, there's his flashlight. Here they are looking up. Oh, there's the owl. And he's just coming down on a branch and he gets a flashlight shining on him. Ooh. 
and probably startled them a little bit, right? Do you know owls sleep during the day and come out at night? And that's why they had to do all of this at night. For one minute, three minutes, maybe even a hundred minutes, we stared at one another. The owl looked at us and we looked at the owl. And there's a picture of a beautiful owl. It's a big bird with wide wings. say anything and the owl didn't say anything and they just looked at each other and then the owl pumped its great wings and lifted off the branch like a shadow without a sound and it flew back into the forest time to go home pa said to me then i knew i could talk i could even laugh out loud but i was a shadow as we walked home and there's the owl taking off Taking off from the branch and flying away. And there, whoop, you see him down there? And there's the daddy with the flashlight and the little girl watching. Just kind of mesmerized or spellbound, meaning they were kind of like, wow, looking up at it. When you go owling, you don't need words or warm or anything but hope. That's what Pa says. The kind of hope that flies on silent wing under a shining owl moon. And that's the end. And they're walking home together, and Dad has picked up his tired girl now. And they're happy. They, they had a successful uh, owl sighting. And now they're going to go home to their house way over here and get some sleep. Because they had a special night that they'll always remember. And maybe she'll get to go again for another night of an owl moon. Well, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.